And welcome to Growth Amplifiers Live. My name is Kenny Harper, and I'm excited today because I've got a rock star professional who has been doing some amazing podcasts of her own. And I'm really glad to have her visit and join in Growth Amplifiers Live. She is the owner and um, podcast host, as I mentioned before, of Abundant Beans. Um, welcome, Jamie E. O'Kane. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate um, your persistence in getting me on here. <laughs> <laughs> it is persistent, right? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was good. It was great because it's just like, I'm really not ignoring you. I just have to have my time. <laughs> and, and that's, you know, just as, you're, as people are tuning in and thinking mm-hmm. about that, you know, consistency, there's fortune in the follow-up. Right. And Absolutely. Whether it's getting someone to be on your podcast or it's getting them to potentially even be a client yeah. or potentially to get someone to refer. Sometimes we've got to be able to show up more than once to get someone's attention, get on the radar and get ideas into action. Yeah. And I think a lot of us aren't good at that. I have to admit that I'm not good at that. Um, I'm an introvert. So I just assume that, you know, if people want to talk to me, they'll talk to me. <laughs> so that's not something I'm really good at, which is why I've um, hired that out. <laughs> what? And, and so, oh, and I know that some people have told me that, you know, I, I don't want to be that person that annoys mm-hmm. the, the heck out of someone or, mm-hmm. or push people away. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of that goes down to intent. What is right. the intent? Exactly. Is your intent to show up and serve and provide value Mm -hmm. and create a win-win or is your intent Mm -hmm. simply out for yourself? Right. And I'm I'm bringing that up because if if you're, if you're tuning in and hearing this, um, I know that a lot of times I'll hear that, you know, people don't want to um, push people away, but Mm if I can't tell you that the game changer for me is I was, I was doing follow up and I was getting to the point where maybe I'm, Maybe they're just not that into me. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to give this last little follow up. And I had someone um, become a client, still mm-hmm. a, a long client, mm-hmm. and and thank me for the consistent, persistent follow up. Mm-hmm. Because it's like they're buried, they're overwhelmed, right. they have challenges. And if it wasn't for the follow up, there's a lot of things they'd want to do that they couldn't. All right. Yeah. And I get that. And I guess. Um, it's not about like not wanting to bother people. It's that I'm mm-hmm. an introvert. <laughs> right. And I'm just like, so you this know, people and things. <laughs> and, and so you, you mentioned earlier, um, you know, the power of delegation. Yes. Oh my gosh. Such a, it's huge. So and another thing people will say that limits their amplification mm-hmm. is I don't have time to do this. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. So if we don't have time to do it, well, there's a couple things you could do. What are what are some of the things you could do? Because I'm sure that's come across um, your field before, and you help others, you know, th- think of ways that they can improve their business. So, mm-hmm. what do you tell people when they they give that excuse? Yeah, um, you know, not having time to do something in your business means that it's not a priority for you, um, or it's not something that makes money usually, mm-hmm. um, or it's really just something that you don't want to do. Um, and all of those are extremely valid. So you need to either hire somebody to do it, find a way to automate it or decide it's just not for your business. Um, so, you know, for, for instance, so I'm a CPA, I run a CPA firm. Um, we don't do payroll. I refuse. I refuse to do payroll. Uh, we have a couple people, a couple third parties that, um, we send everybody to, um, but we get to choose that for our own business. And I think that's, that's the power and I don't want to, you don't uh-huh. have to, right? It's your business. You get to choose. Um, it's make your own business rules, choose what kind of business you want. So if it's one of those three things, you don't want to, you can't, um, or, you know, it's just not a priority for you, then hire it or don't do it. So, so, so make a decision and then take an action, mm-hmm. either eliminate it or get it in action. So, so but make a decision. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and no, and but no decision is also a decision. I, I tell people that like deciding not to handle something right now is a decision, um, mm-hmm. and that's fine. It might come back up later for you though if you don't handle it a different way. So now you have a nice tax and accounting firm, and you're doing some amazing things. And I'm just yeah. curious to kind of get the backstory. How did you get started 
doing what you're doing now? Yeah. What um, you know, it really kind of goes back to college. Um, I bounced around in majors, um, and then I was like, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go to the business school. We'll see what happens. Uh, maybe I'll do management. Um, and I started my my first accounting class, and I went, oh. This is what my brain was made for uh, <laughs> debits and credits and putting these in piles and, uh, you know, problems. And, you know, when you do that, it's really re reactive. Right. Um, and then I ended up being a tax manager in a medium sized firm in the Denver in the Denver area here. It just kind of happened. Um, but it was a consulting based firm. Um, we were doing proactive tax planning. Uh, we were, you know, going out to the clients and helping them with their issues, helping them hire, you know, just really doing the gamut of consulting as well as tax returns. Um, and I learned how to tax problem solve. Um, so our focus is on proactive tax planning, is helping people's structures um, and tax situation work for them, not against them. That's our little tagline. Um, but really, how are we putting money in? How can we put money in business owners' pockets through the tax code? Legitly through the tax code, through the tax code. We don't do any, I always say we do um, legal tax mitigation over here. Um, it's all legit um, and help them with compliance so that their businesses can grow. Um, you know, because people are always like, well, I need, you know, cash for this and cash for that. And I'm always just like, let's find it in your taxes. Um, and generally we can. Um, there's so many ways that the code is beneficial to business, to business owners. Um, and it's, amazing to use those, you know, use the code to help people. So what do you think the biggest oversight is when it comes to taxes? <laughs> um, I would say one of our low, low hanging fruit is generally entity selection. Um, mm -hmm. We have way too many in us, way too many people in S corps that shouldn't be. Um, it's one of my favorite soapboxes, <laughs> quite honestly. Um, you know, the, you know, we're picking entities based on, you know, what my neighbor has or what so-and-so says we should do, but really, you know, what are your long-term goals? Um, you know, what are you building and how are you building it? Um, you know, if you want to buy a bunch of property, you shouldn't have your properties in corporations. So there's a lot of different ways to do structuring around entities uh, for legal for legal purposes, for tax savings purposes, for future purposes. Maybe you want to sell in five years and try to maybe, you know, mitigate some capital gains. There's a lot of different ways to do that. So um, that's one of the biggest things that we work on is, you know, what do you want long term? Then let's pick an entity that makes sense for you. Or let's move you into an entity that makes sense um, on top of tax planning. Now, you know, top of tax mitigation, you know, moving things into different entities. So for the business that doesn't know what they don't know, <laughs> what's what's kind of that that spot? Because I would I'd feel like I kind of run into a similar situation where there's there's businesses that are doing good mm -hmm. and they're thinking, hey, we're already doing good. We don't necessarily need help or we're not mm -hmm. looking for help because we're already coming along and doing great. Mm -hmm. But as a, as a marketing advisor and growth strategist, there's a lot of things typically that's, there's gaps all over the place. There's mm -hmm. untapped opportunities, there's bottlenecks, mm -hmm. there's blind sides. Mm -hmm. And I've got to be able to shine a light in the area and say, did you realize that there's all this opportunity here or mm -hmm. potential challenges you didn't know? Yeah. So they don't know what they don't know. So <laughs> how do you help people that maybe are, maybe they don't even realize they have that problem, mm -hmm. uh, identify, Hey, this is an issue. Yeah. Um, you know, it's hard, but really when we're looking at, um, you know, we're looking at businesses in that, you know, once you get to that 1 million, um, you probably need to have do some entity, you know, some entity that, that, that 1 million gross, you know, mm -hmm. three to five employees, um, or, you know, you've got moving pieces, you've got big dreams, you've got things you want to be doing. Um, we're also looking at generally those clients that have that effective rate, effective tax rate in the high 15 to 20, you know, kind of high teens to 25%. Um, that's where, you know, or higher, that's where we can really do some planning and some mitigation and move, um, you know, get some taxes saved. Now, now speaking of growth and marketing, mm -hmm. um, I know that when you're working with people's finances and things mm -hmm. of that nature, you've really got to gain their trust. Yeah. Um, what has been effective for you for gaining clients and, and building your business? 
Yeah. Um, you know, because we work so different, um, it's a hard sell. And I say that all the time um, because we do tax planning first and people are like, well, I just need tax returns. And we just, we don't do that because our businesses, the beer businesses we work with, that's not what they need. They need proper advisory around their tax and accounting situations. Um, so the podcast, so we have the Abundant Beans podcast, which has been um, running for about two and a half years now. So we're, thank you. We're about like 120 or some episodes now, which is um, just kind of blows my mind on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that's, so that's one of our, you know, our big things, but quite honestly, that's the follow-up process. Um, we're working on those right now. Um, we just hired a marketing company to, you know, really start working on, you know, getting consistent emails out, you know, doing all these things that honestly, I'm just not good at doing. Um, mm. so, um, you know, we have a content generation machine in the, um, in the podcast, mm -hmm. um, which, uh, really is helpful. <laughs> When you're trying to do marketing. So everybody I got out to was like, well, you've got so much content. I was like, I know. So, you know, that's what we're working on. We're also working on how do we change the message around accounting services to more, you know, really giving people the advisory they want. Most mm -hmm. people hire an accountant thinking they're going to get advisory or they hire a tax person thinking they're going to get some advisory and consulting. Um, and quite honestly, that's just not how, you know, the industry is built or the tax industry is built. It's built on quantity, not quality. Um, and a lot of the time, you know, people are really only paying for a tax return. You're not paying for support. You're not paying for a relationship. Um, so really getting that message out and really working on really kind of the industry PR as a whole. I work with Intuit on some of this as well. You know, we have to move to advisory. You know, everybody talks about the robots are coming. Well, accounting is one of the fastest automated, um, automated, um, industries. Um, and while, um, you know, robots and automation can do so much, it can't make long-term, you know, decisions and choices, um, and, you know, advise you on how to move, um, in your business. So, and that's what we're built for. <laughs> oh, he's got a book. So this is, this is not my book, but this was a recent podcast guest, the feeling economy, uh -huh. really talking about how, you know, AI is creeping up and mm -hmm. those that can really connect with feelings and mm -hmm. work with people mm -hmm. and create relationships and experiences are the are the ones that will persevere mm -hmm. through this yeah. revolution so mm -hmm. i think that's you're hitting the nail on the head and i know that yeah. that's that's where I've, I've evolved my uh career as well because mm -hmm. there's there's marketers and marketing companies mm -hmm. but then there's like a uh, marketing advisory which is right. it's more strategic it's a different mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a different scene so it's it's, there's that parallel yeah. Um, where, you know, a lot of other people are being able to offer services. A lot of things are being automated, but yeah. to be able to have the experience and the and the guidance and build relationship, yeah. that's, that's not something that's going away soon. Um, pulling in as what's one of a challenge that you've faced mm -hmm. on your journey thus far, that's been kind of like something that was, hmm, that was a big one to tackle. And then you worked your way through. Yeah. Um, a big one for us is choosing a niche. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've always uh, worked in firms that, you know, were just kind of general. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we had all kinds of different businesses and I actually like really love that. Um, but um, we really needed to pick a niche so that we could really focus on the advisory um, and really focus on the tax planning as well you know that was what was really important for us and so i spent a lot of time thinking about it and trying to figure out who we work with best mm -hmm. um and that's not easy um you know a lot of people really struggle with their niches for a reason um and i think you know really getting down to the nitty-gritty of what do they look like demographically what do they look like psychographically what do they look like industry wise um you know what's going on in their industries you know um so picking our niche our niches and the people we work with the best, um, you really have to figure out who you are as well. <laughs> right. You have to be honest about that, right? Mm -hmm. um, because I'm always saying, I'm a teacher, but honestly, I'm not. Just hand me your stuff. Do what I tell you to do. And generally, it works out. People in my life will tell you, if you take Jamie's advice, it works out. So really, those, you know, looking for psychographically, the people that were really just amazing at what they do, um, but also trusted other experts um, because that's how I work. Uh, mm -hmm. It's how I hand things over. Um, and I 
just work best with people who can hand stuff over. Um, you know, obviously we're happy to explain things to you and I'm happy to talk you through two things and we're happy to answer questions, but I'm not going to tell you how I do my job. Right. Um, or try to explain every bit of the tax code to you because it just, it's not really something that you need to know, right. really <laughs> understand, nor should you like, why? <laughs> it's not helping either one of us. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not helping anybody. So, um, because it's so complex, mm -hmm. you know, because our, the U S tax code is an extremely complex beast that they've just add complexity to four times in the last year. If you think you want to do your tax, you know, tax returns, knock yourself out, but I can promise you you're missing something because I keep missing stuff. And this is my job. I've done 60 hours of CPE in the last year. Right. So that I, I, it's funny. We've had similar journeys in different realms. Yeah. But I've, I've had that experience back when I was doing more tech in the search engine optimization mm -hmm. world of just trying to keep up with the algorithms and everything. <laughs> And oh, that's ever changing as well. Some clients uh, wanted to know all the details. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Why are we spending time doing this? Right. <laughs> this is what I tell you today is probably going to be outdated next month. So, mm -hmm. but yeah. Um, so, thank you for sharing that because I, I know that that is one of the things that we're advocates for is about mm -hmm. picking, picking a lane. Doesn't mean you can't help other people. Oh, but no, we help lots of other people. You can help. You'll be that much more effective and efficient mm -hmm. with connecting with that message and, yeah. and you're able to get to a deeper level mm -hmm. um really really doing that um what's one thing that you've learned on your journey that might help someone else on theirs um i think they're really like i always talk about outside eyes i always talk about having coaches i always talk about you know having a team of people um to help you see your own stuff mm -hmm. um is really the only thing that's been effective for me in growing a business, um, you know, and trusting my mentors and trusting my coaches. Um, but having people to bounce stuff off of having people to see we can't see our own forest for our trees and our businesses a lot of the time. Um, so really creating that, you know, your, your panel of experts. I don't know what that looks like a lot of the time, but it needs to obviously be in, um, you know, in your weaknesses usually, um, but I have two coaches that tell people all the time, I have two coaches. And a lot of time we talk about the same stuff and sometimes we don't, but they each see different things um, in my business that I don't see. Um, and they help me make decisions um, and help me move forward on things that need to happen. Um, my growth didn't start until I hired coaches. Um, and I didn't, you know, you have to have that in your business. Um, you hear that or, amplifiers? <laughs> it's not just me tooting that horn, but whether that's, looking at your marketing, looking at your operations, looking at your finances, mm -hmm. we all have blind spots. And mm -hmm. if we can get someone that knows, likes, and trusts us in our business, they can give fresh perspective. They can help us see the opportunities we can't and help amplify them to a new level. Yeah. It, it just, it never hurts to get fresh perspective. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of. Smart. Yeah. And, um, you know, I do some mentoring too. Um, you know, within my industry. Um, and really it's the permission sometimes, right? It's the permission right. to say, okay, well, maybe I don't need to hand over this thing. I need to hand over this thing. Um, you know, or, you know, or the permission to raise prices. I was actually just talking to a client the other day and I was like, you know, um, cause I did a large price increase this year for a lot of reasons. The big one being complexity, the code has become extremely more complex the last year. <laughs> um, you know, we've been working our tail off to help our clients this last year. Um, and so I sat down with one of my clients and I was like, so he's good, also a good friend of mine. I was like, so the price increase stuff that I did. And he goes, yes, thank you. You actually gave me permission to raise some of mine. Right. So right. it always like kind of solidifies that if I'm doing things in my business, the people who, um, who trust me, admire me and know me, know that um that i have good reason and i'm giving them permission as well you know or kind of you know it kind of just solidifies their idea that maybe they need to do the same thing um so having those people that we know like and trust and um you know know that they're you know that know that they have integrity in their mm -hmm. business a lot of the time then those people can also give us permission to change things for ourselves in a better way I, I love it. Sometimes just a little assist can make a big difference. <laughs> it does. It makes just a huge a little difference. Assist. It makes just a like, huge difference. Are you sure? Yes. All right. Bam, I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah, go do it. <laughs> Cause usually, usually it just kind of like, okay, well I've been kind of thinking about maybe that thing and you're sure I should do it. Yeah. 
Damn sure. Go ahead. Go do that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's let's rock. <laughs> so uh, one strategy um, I'm putting the in the promos mm-hmm. is a concept that I've um, reheard recently on an audio book. It's the concept of zero based thinking, <laughs> um, and it's it's really just a, a simple sort of philosophy in thinking that if you could make a decision based on what's going on right now in your business, mm-hmm. based on our go, if you can go back in time, mm-hmm. I, messed that, I messed that totally up. Retake. <laughs> retake. We'll do this whole podcast over. We need nah. to reschedule <laughs> no retakes. We don't do retakes. We do one shot. <laughs> one shot. If you were to go back in time mm-hmm. and, and evaluate decisions, whether that's working with a, a client, taking mm-hmm. on a team member, kicking off a particular effort, would you make the same decision based on what you know now? And so it's called zero-based thinking. You, you go back mm-hmm. and you look at your your jobs, your clients, the activities you have, and then you think, if if I were to go back in time, would I remake that decision? And then if not, mm-hmm. then you consider just cutting it, cutting your losses, and just drawing a line under it and saying, yeah. we got to get rid of it. <sighs> I honestly, I was actually reading about this because I saw it because I usually don't even read the notes because I don't really care what people ask me. I'm just happy to whatever. I'll I'll answer whatever (laughs) in an open book. Um, I was actually reading about this and that's really interesting. I honestly feel like every client has taught us something, whether it was a good good or bad, you know, like, and then Mm -hmm. it's something that we've changed or pivoted or made our business better. Um, I honestly feel like, um, you know, our journey is our journey. Um, and it all kind of had a purpose and a reason. Um, I do, I do feel like if I had known that, um, or if I had been more open to having a team, um, and to not just doing everything myself from the get go, we'd probably Mm -hmm. be farther along than I, um, than we are now. Mm -hmm. Um, but honestly, like, I feel like our pace is our pace, you know, like when we're ready for things, they happen. Um, so it's hard for me to like, I don't really have any regrets, but I do feel like I, I didn't ever initially go into this business just thinking it's just going to be all me. So, so for t- slight clarification, so mm-hmm. for those tuning in, um, so it's, it's not like, um, would you not do it? Because we do learn from even the mm-hmm. mistakes that we have. Mm-hmm. But the thought is like, if you had a team member on your team now that you're like, man, I, I wish I never ha- hired that person. Then rather than continuing I'm not yeah. saying that's the case, but rather than continuing that, mm-hmm. um, then you say, you know what? I'm going to change that mm-hmm. <laughs> and make a different decision or or yeah. saying, hey, client, maybe you're not the best fit. Maybe you need someone else who, can, who has different expertise <laughs> yeah. or a different service level or something of that nature. Yeah, we actually just did that um, this last year. Um, one of it was a large price increase for most of our clients and the other was um, – you know, just really just a straight up, like, we can't help you the best. You really need to go find somebody else to, to handle this. Cause it's just not our expertise. Um, and it's not something we want our expertise to be. Um, and I think, I don't know, I think it's about, about boundaries right? a lot of the time. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, right this moment, we actually just hired a practice, a new practice manager. Um, mm-hmm. and we did a lot of work, more work than I've ever done on a hire, trying to make sure we got the right person in here. Uh, we did behavioral stuff. We did, you know, technical testing. We did a bunch of stuff. Um, because for a lot of reasons, I'm super type A, I'm super independent and I'm a pretty big personality and I needed somebody in here who could handle me. <laughs> yeah, it makes and, sense. You know, a lot of it really was, can this person handle me? Because I'm really good at hiring people that need to be handled. And I could not do that again. Um, it just never works out for anybody. and It's not happy for anybody. Um, so we were very deliberate about how, how we hired this person. So we'll see how it goes. So but a couple, I'm... a couple, um, hot fire questions real quick. Mm-hmm. So these are questions that have come in from business owners around the, the country. And we're just looking to get some, mm-hmm. some quick answers on these. The first okay. one is how can I grow and scale my business without taking on a lot more expenses? <laughs> um, you know, so automation is a big one. A lot of people are looking at automation, creating bots, things like that. Um, I actually, it's so funny because people say, I'm, you know, I have an accountant on how do, what is their things about, you know, reducing costs? I'm actually the opposite. 
accountant. Um, I'm the alternative accountant who believes that you should go pay for the things that you shouldn't do in your business um, because that will create time for you to actually make more money. Um, so my question would be, how, what can you give up and what can you hire out to go, you know, to go, um, to go create more money? Because mm. that's what I want my business owners to do. I mean, we can look into your expenses, but honestly, if you can't make enough money to cover your current expenses, you know, what are we doing? What are you doing with your time? Right, right. Um, so it's so the takeaway, if you're looking at the expense as an expense, um, because it's just costing money, it's not giving an ROI, then mm -hmm. maybe it's not the best thing to be investing in. Mm -hmm. But if you're investing in your business and it's, generating revenue then it's not quite as much an expense as an investment and it's making you money so mm -hmm. just flipping the paradigm there yeah i mean we got to flip the script on some of this stuff um i'm an, i'm in the accounting industry y'all I, I i understand um but i'll have people be like oh gosh i pay three percent on credit card processing how do i get that down um <laughs> do you have to go to the bank do you have to deposit checks? Do you have to, like, how much time does say, taking a credit card save you? Because I can tell you right now, all of our billing is automated on a monthly recurring basis. I spend five minutes, maybe a month dealing with billing. Mm -hmm. um, if people were sending me checks and I had to go get them and deposit them and deal, do the deal, it was like hours. Oh my gosh. Uh, right? How much more money can I make in that time savings? <laughs> I can remember sitting in my boss's car when I was working maybe 15, 20 years ago and he would get the checks and go deposit them mm -hmm. to the bank. And I'm like, what are you doing? Right. <laughs> what? Right. That just like took a whole half an hour out of our day. Why do we do that? Um, right. That's a lot of billable <laughs> hours, right? Or you, you know, so if you're paying for something in your business, the, the question is, you know, what is the ROI, but what the, what are the efficiencies? that they're creating. Um, I'll just talk about bookkeeping because I think it's a huge deal. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who want to DIY their bookkeeping who have no business DIYing their bookkeeping. Let's be 100%. It's not what you're it's not what you're supposed to be doing in your business. Um, it's not creating any savings for you. It's taking time and you're probably doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's, that's So knock pretty, it off. That is stop, <laughs> so stop. <laughs> right? Um, second question and the mm -hmm. final question, um, as we were wrapping up growth amplifiers okay. live, what are some ways to increase profits if I can't raise oh. my prices? Oof. That's a, that first one's like yeah. raising prices. Um, and I'll, I'll just, I'll just add real quick. Um, why can't so, you? Why yeah. Something? Why can't you? <laughs> what, why couldn't you, unless you're, you have a legal reason. Yeah. But, um, Go ahead. Again, um, so we're going scarcity mindset versus abundant mindset, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's something I really worked on my business. Obviously, we're the abundant beans over here. And that's not because we would advise people to cut costs or not raise prices. Um, we advise people to figure out what they do best um, and focus on that. Um, I think that's huge. Um, it's something we're, we're working on over here all the time. You know, mm -hmm. what is my highest and best? Um, so, you know, how, why can't you raise your prices, first of all? Um, and if that's just money, money, money mindset stuff, then go fix it. Um, and second of all, um, I think, you know, how we create more gross profit is by, we can, we can examine expenses, right? I mean, I guess really that's kind of the flip side of the how do I spend less money question. Um, but really the thing is, what are you doing in your business that maybe you don't need to be doing and that doesn't have value to people? Right. So payroll again, payroll. We don't do payroll um, because payroll doesn't have value. Payroll's mm -hmm. just a product. Um, and there's plenty of people out there that do way better than we can do it for a lot less. Quite right. honestly. Um, so what are you paying for in your business that could be um, could be outsourced um, to an outsourcer and maybe you can get rid of a position? Um, and um, or, you know, what services are you providing that are low profit? Right. So again, payroll is low profit for us. It's not something we do because it just people don't want to pay what I want to charge to actually have to deal with it. So getting rid of those services that are low profit that people don't value is a really good way to um, to increase your, you know, increase your revenue, um, you know, like get it. rid of that stuff that doesn't 
you know, like we have to do tax returns over here. We just do. It's not the funnest thing, but it's the back end of all that compliance on the tax planning because we want to make sure that's all done correctly. I, I really like that. Um, and I, I want you to think about that because it's a little counterintuitive. You know, I worked with a CPA one time and she was, she was like, well, you know, everything generates money, but I'm like, yeah, but at to what cost? Everything has an opportunity cost. Right. Think of the restaurant that has, you know, 30 pages of a menu and how much overhead and upkeep and everything they have to do just to keep that business afloat compared yeah. to the ones that really focus on the their main menu items and yeah. can really build momentum. I mean, are you going to be the cheese cake factory or um, are you raising canes? Right. Right. I mean, if you've had raisin canes, their focus is chicken strips. That's all they do. And it's amazing. Right. But you got a cheesecake. Plug. <laughs> yeah. You got it. You got it. You know, you got a cheesecake factory and you can have everything or anything and it might not be that good. So, um, Jamie, if, if people want to learn more about you or your podcast, or your business, mm -hmm. where can they go? And what could they do? Yeah, so AbundantBeans.com. Um, it's a brand new website. So if you want to go there and say nice things about it, I really appreciate it. Six months of work. Um, so the podcast is on there. Everything's on there now. <laughs> we actually had a firm website and a podcast website. And it, was a, it was a whole mess. Um, <laughs> but we're now Abundant, we're all at AbundantBeans.com. Or you can help me up on LinkedIn. Um, or you can follow us on Facebook, um, Abundant Beans on Facebook. Um, or yeah, good LinkedIn. Um, feel free to, you know, message me. That's fine. Um, but there's contact form also on the website. Just be patient with us right now because it's tax season and I have more legislation to go learn today. <laughs> well, um, thanks for tuning in or catching the replay. We appreciate you. I encourage you to check out Jamie's podcast and her business, uh, and keep on amplifying. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks for Jamie. having me. To show your support, take a moment to amplify this message by sharing it online. To connect with me or gain more business growth insights, visit www.growthamplifiers.com. Thank you for your support.